are several grounds. For instance, a number of people were rejected because it was said that they were not on the voters' list. We have, in fact, found people on the voters' list who should not have been rejected. So that's one ground. Another ground is that uh, people were rejected because their signatures on the petition form did not match what was held in the binders at elections and boundaries. And there is actually nothing in the law that says the signatures must match what is in elections and boundaries binder. In fact, we have an, one applicant who was in a car accident, partially paralyzed, and is only able to write with great difficulty. So it's clear that her signature could never be the same. And yet she was disenfranchised. And then there is the issue of people who sign duplicate and triplicate. There's nothing in the law that gives the power to the chief elections officer to disenfranchise those people. The elections and boundaries department has said that there cannot be two attempts to recall in one term of office. That Does correct. that particular clause affect this? Um, because what happened is that the report was made to the GG that there were not sufficient signatures to trigger the recall. So this isn't going to be a matter where there will be a repetitioning. You can only go for one petition according to the law in any particular legislative session. So we did do the one, one petition. What we find difficult and wrong in this instance was the decision made by the chief elections officer to reject 337 signatures. So it is that decision that we're asking the court to revisit. And if the court rules that she must revisit that, the chief elections officer will go back specifically to those 337, look at them again, recount again, and if there are sufficient for the petition to go forward and trigger a writ of referendum, that's what will happen. So it won't be a starting again of the process.